What's going on guys, I'm Mark Lentanga from Techno Buffalo and today we'll be taking a look at this year's flagship killer, the OnePlus One. If you ignore the usual release from Samsung, HTC, and LG, this is arguably amongst the biggest mobile release we've seen so far this year. Since its announcement in April, the OnePlus One has become one of the more sought after devices, both because of its rarity and price. For just $299, buyers can pick up the 16GB Silk White model off contract. The 64GB model, meanwhile, is only $349. But good luck finding one. Since launch, OnePlus has bet on a terrible invite system to distribute its handset, making the device nearly impossible to buy. Even today, after a few months it was announced, the phone still isn't available to purchase publicly. But not only that, the company has been at the center of a lot of bad press for its customer service. OnePlus hasn't exactly endeared itself to a world of technology so far. Still, people are hyped and are willing to forgive. But is the device even worth the headache? That's what we're here to find out. Now let's start off with the basic specifications. The OnePlus One is rocking a beautiful 5.5 inch 1080p display with 401 PPI, 3100 milliamp battery, 2.5 GHz quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor with the Adreno 330 GPU, and 3 GB of RAM. Now depending on which model you choose, you'll either get the 16 GB or 64 GB internal storage, though neither support micro SD expansion. It also sports a 13 megapixel Sony Exmor sensor with six lenses, dual LED flash, along with the ability to record 4K video and slow motion 720p videos at 120 frames per second. The phone is really fast and we didn't really notice any lag with this device. You play games, browse the web with multiple tabs, watch videos, and opened up a ton of apps. Yet the device is still super quick, multitasking is super quick too, and overall the whole thing is just really responsive. Now as I said before, the OnePlus One sports a 5.5 inch screen and it just looks beautiful, though it's no better than the Galaxy S5 or the HTC One M8. But it is an IPS display and comes with what OnePlus One is calling touch on lens technology, which removes the distance between the touch sensor and the display panel so that the screen instantaneously responds to even the slightest touch. It's also equipped with Gorilla Glass 3 to protect the device's screen from scratches and usual wear and tear. Now the color of the screen is very accurate, it's not overly vibrant the way the Super AMOLED display would be on a Samsung device. In my opinion, photos, videos, games, and all of that look great. If you're not satisfied with how the screen looks, you can actually tweak it. The default setting is standard, but there's also a vivid and custom option where you can change things like hue, saturation, and contrast. Now some people were complaining about a yellow tint that appeared on their one, but we didn't really have that issue in either one of our OnePlus One devices. Now for a device that's just $299 off contract, we expected the cheap price to reflect poorly on the design. But the OnePlus One feels much more premium than the price suggests. As good, if not better, than some of the top Android devices available. Now, featuring a design that most closely matches something like the Oppo Find 7, the OnePlus One sports a curved back and slim profile that's very clean to look at. OnePlus said it was determined to build something that can go toe to toe with the best devices out there. And it shows. The textured back on a sandstone black model we've been using feels awesome. It feels like a really fine sandpaper and not all that rough. It's worth mentioning that it does attract dust and other smaller particles, though it can be easily cleaned and you can't really smudge it up with fingerprints. Up front is a nice 5.5 inch display all complemented by a chrome outer rim that adds an extra touch of luxury. The display itself is raised slightly too, which creates a nice frame with a chrome rim. When it's all polished up and clean, it looks stunning. You almost don't want to touch it since it looks so nice. Everything from the ergonomic back to the button placement is perfect too. The power button is placed on the device's right side and is really comfortable to press. Meanwhile, the slim volume rocker is placed near the middle of the left side and is mostly easy to use. On the top is a 3.5mm headphone jack, and on the bottom is a micro USB connection flanked on each side by stereo speaker which are loud and sounds great. Also around the devices are three microphones on the top, back, and the bottom. So the OnePlus One has two cameras, one 13 megapixel shooter up in the back with Sony's Exmor sensor, and a 5 megapixel shooter up in the front that has a wide angle, non-distorted lens. The OnePlus One really impressed me with its camera. The images I took with this phone are just beautiful. 13 megapixel Sony Exmor sensor produced nice detailed shots, and since the aperture is at f2, images provided a nice depth of field. Now the stock camera app makes it easy to quickly shoot and change settings on the go. Unfortunately, the OnePlus One doesn't offer any optical image stabilization, but with its already beast of a camera, there's not much to complain about. So the battery on the OnePlus One is non-removable, but it's still packing a beastly 3100 milliamp battery. OnePlus was definitely listening to consumers when it comes to battery life as battery life on the One is amazing. I have pushed email refreshing every 5 minutes and other social networks pushing notifications. I make a few phone calls and messages throughout my day and by the time I get home from the office, never have I had to worry about plugging the OnePlus One as soon as I get home like I do with my 5S. I could still keep going. 
Only when going to bed around 10 or 11 did I need to plug it in. So you could say that the battery is one of the selling points of this phone as well. Now the OnePlus One is running CyanogenMod Mod 11 S, which is based out of stock Android 4.4.2 KitKat. Now CyanogenMod Mod is one of the main reasons why this phone is so great. With the ability to customize pretty much every part of the phone, from the home screen to the lock screen, you can easily install new themes, icons, fonts, and much more. All the Google services come pre-installed, meaning you have access to apps like Gmail, Google Maps, Chrome, and even Google Now, which is always great to have. There's also some really cool gestures built in within CyanogenMod Mod 11 S, like the ability to turn on the screen with just two taps and locking the device by double tapping on a status bar. Other gestures include drawing a circle on the lock screen to bring up the camera, although you can also swipe left on the lock screen to access the camera as well. And you can also draw a V to turn on the two LED flash in the back. And for the most part, they're great, but I found them to be a hit or miss most of the time. More than once, I pulled the device out of my pocket and found one of the gestures had been accidentally activated. It is a bit annoying, but you also have the option to turn them off if you prefer. Other features that's included with CyanogenMod Mod or the ability to turn on or off the capacitive and software buttons and even add more software buttons to the screen. Now within the two weeks we tested this device, we didn't really experience any app crashes or reboots. Cyanogen Mod 11S seems to be a really stable build and it runs very well in the one. Now obviously since this is a phone, it's gotta make phone calls. So we used both the Chinese and global version, the one we have right here on T-Mobile and the call quality was great. People were hearing me just fine, but the person I was talking to I could barely hear. I had the volume all the way up and it seemed a bit too low for my taste. Even if I use a speakerphone, it's not as loud as we'd like. Now I'm sure that's something that a software update could fix, but other than that little thing, everything else was great. LTE speeds were off the charts with T-Mobile. So to wrap things up, I'd give the OnePlus One an 8.5 out of 10. Why? There's so many reasons why this phone could be your next smartphone. It's got a beautiful 5.5 inch screen, the camera is great, it's got LTE, great processor and three gigabytes of RAM. It's running Cyanogen Mod 11S out of the box. And last but not least, the price. The price is comparable to something like the Nexus 5, although the Nexus 5 is already available via the Google Play Store, while the OnePlus One is still an invite only program upon making this video. Of course, not every device that's out on the market will be perfect, there will always be little quirks, but the few we mentioned here could probably be fixed with a software update. So what do you guys think of the OnePlus One? Is it really the next flagship killer? Let us know in the comments down below and maybe we'll give one away to one of you guys. And as always, I'm Mark Lansenga from Techno Buffalo. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe right here. Be the first ones to know whenever new videos get uploaded. We got a ton of stuff. We do phones, tablets, cars, anything that has to do with consumer electronics that has to be plugged in or uses batteries, we review.